Hi guys. Uh, today I want to talk about the ancient navigation system. And here's uh, one guy who is uh, alternative uh, scientific uh, person, person very well known in Russia. He is often uh, invited to some TV shows and his name is Nikolai Subotin. And we are on his channel trying to uh, find out what he is going to tell us about the ancient navigation systems. So, he's going to talk and I'm going to translate uh, and maybe insert my comments between the, his points. Возникают дополнительные вопросы. Потому что когда ты вот эти вот камешки видишь и трогаешь живую, немножко они ощущаются... So he's saying like, uh, well guys, I'm not just uh, sitting in my butt on the couch. I'm walking around and going on expeditions and I'm touching all these stones everywhere. And I know what I'm talking about because it's not just theory, it's uh, real uh, research. Why I want to talk about the Mengirs? Just a strange formation. Nobody knows what it is. There's a bunch of theories about it. Some of them think that it's a cult, cult in cultural objects and made for some ancient occult uh, activities. Ну, у нас вообще очень интересная в истории археологии и традиции. Если мы чего-то не можем, как ученые объяснить... And we, we, you know, we got some strange thing in archaeology science. If we cannot explain something... Объяснить, мы говорим, что это культовое сооружение. We say it's a cultural object. ...что этому там камню, этому столбу, этому мегалиту обязательно поклонялись. We say it's like, it's uh, obviously the cultural objects and somebody like prayed all those stones for some reason, you know, like, like pray to God and he prayed the stone. Ну, слава богу, пусть так. Oh well. Попробую сегодня рискну предложить новую, но она не совсем новая концепция. I'll try to insert some new version, new theory about those stones. Просто некоторые, скажем, вещи так сложились. Давайте попробуем сегодня посмотреть, что получилось. So, it's just the way it went, the way it goes. I just Happen to see the stones, and that's what what I got to. Я на каждом на каждой лекции не устаю говорить, что создаем мы с нашими коллегами глобальную карту артефакт. As I've already told on many of my uh, interviews and many of my uh, lectures, uh, I've been talk I've been talking about the global artifact map, which we are creating right now. И вот буквально за те полгода, что мы с вами не виделись. And the half a year that I missed, uh, that, that we missed my uh, interviews, I was doing exactly this. And I was, uh, and I was, and I was uh, doing this research on Mengers. And I've got about 500 of those Mingers objects uh, in six months. And this factology base uh, makes me makes it possible to uh, come to some conclu conclusions. So that's what we're gonna talk about in the last, in the next 12 minutes. Ну что такое мингиры все знаете, он специально. So what is mingir? You all know. It's just like stone, stone objects. По всему миру, непонятно для чего. Everywhere on this planet. Опять же кто-то говорит, что это. Somebody says it's just. Cultural object. Someone, somebody says it's just ancient grave uh, signs, like here's the grave. But oh, for real, there's some graves, maybe 
but we don't know exactly, but we cannot deny it. But I think it's an ancient navigation system. Я являюсь сторонником именно той теории, что мы в данном случае имеем с универсальной геоинформационной системой. This is universal. Uh, universal is like uh, any kind. Unique or maybe some. So objects, uh, they can be used in many purposes. Системы наших предков. And it could be a navigation system of our ancient ancestors. Сюда, кстати, хорошо вписывается и... Почему с помощью некоторых мингиров можно проводить астрономические And uh, somebody says it's good to make some astronomical observation with those mingers, and I don't deny it too. Людение, только немножко для других вещей не делались. И почему рядом действительно находится культурное отложение, там начиная с эпохи неолита, заканчивая. We have like neolith uh, cultural layers in those mingers uh, places. Уже современностью. Давайте посмотрим. Ну, so вот, they are Понятно было. Вот. Я специально, кстати, выбрал вот именно такие фотографии. That's the pictures I've chosen because it's, it's nice to see what we have. Где мегалиты выстроены в линию. А... Megaliths uh, lines made those mangers pretty uh, strange. Действительно, если мы работаем на месте и немножко начинаем мыслить с точки зрения... If we work uh, on the ground... We have uh, we had to make some conclusions while we checking them. It's geodesia or maybe the science about maps. We have like some coincidences and we mathematically cal calculate it. There's some examples of them. There's some paintings of some of them. It's uh, not quite right to say that mangiers don't uh, hold uh, any pictures on them. We found a bunch of uh, mangiers with pictures. На самом деле рисунков очень много. И вот когда мы по Уралу в прошлом году. When we traveled the Ural mountain last year. We had some another purposes though. But we met some strange things. When we found on the territory of Bashkiria near Ural Mountains on some megaliths we found some bad guys. Bad guys like uh, cutting all, the, all those images off the megaliths so for some purpose. We don't know who, who is doing this. Just destroying the uh, ancient artifacts. So this is uh, the Hakassia megaliths and Hakassia paintings. That's what they look like. Maybe it's strange, but still it's how they look like. But you, you ain't gonna find any of those anymore because they all destroyed. It's the paintings from the archaeologist expeditions of the 30s in the 20th century. Right now we cannot find those mangoes. We can find those paintings on them if we find some mangoes. So it's completely destroyed. Сейчас этого уже нет, к сожалению. Что-то уничтожено, что-то растащено по коллекциям. И буквально всего лишь несколько десятков. Some mangers went to some private collections, you know. But maybe 10 or 20 of them are left on the ground. Находятся вот таких замечательных каменных изображений в музеях Хакасии. Ну, в принципе, some of them, maybe some of them, yeah, we have some of them in the museums of Хакасия region. But mostly they destroyed. This is a map of those mangers that we found, and uh, every dot and every uh, text is a is a place and what is like where is located.
Это вот как раз фрагмент моей базы. Вы с мой дербейс. Начали наносить целенаправленно на карту Мингира, начали вырисовывать некие, скажем так, реперные точки. So when we put all those dots on this map, we can see some uh, multiple Mingir's location in one place. Где этих мингиров сосредоточено достаточно много. Начали уже анализировать. Сегодня, например, вам покажу всего лишь на одной группе. So we мы слышали так называемые Ахуновские мингиры. Это считается, скажем так, одной из древних обсерваторий, причем обсерватории Урала. Стоунхендж тогда даже еще и не планировался. So we have like this Akuna mingirs, which is older than Stonehenge. Друидами, потому что по датировке, по тем неолитическим находкам. As we dated by the all these scientific methods. The dating is like uh, uh, 12 to 14,000 years before our era, before Christ. This is not absolute and not just quite correct, but I don't think we can argue with, <laughs> with this date. То, что пишут наши товарищи археологи. That's what archaeologists say. Вот есть несколько таких центров. Значит, это у нас, кто географию помнит, Хакасия. But still we have these locations with the plenty of mangers concentrating in one place. Это у нас район страны городов. Это у нас район Челябинска. Ну, это тут у нас уже начинается Московия. So, как это выглядит? Вот это вот я специально. This is how it looks on those maps of archaeologists. You see these objects are mangirs. Here, here, here. This is Russian maps. And uh, this is the. Я взял вот эти вот схемы. Вот эта схема расположения мегалитов именно сделанная уже археологами на археологическом. This is the archaeologist maps. Вот то, что вы видите вот здесь. And this is geodesia map, which is triangular coordination map. Triangular network. Triangular map. That's what geodists do. They like walk on this planet and put those dots, and that's how they can like travel. Like a thousand kilometers by, by foot and not get lost. Триангуляционных сеток потом строят профили местности. Но что самое главное, каждый узел этой точки, не имея ни компаса, не имея ни. You don't have to have a compass. You don't have to have anything. You just can have this map and you can travel wherever. И GPS навигатора, используя простые геометрические приемы, знания прости. Just using of simple geometry, school geometry can help you and you can use this map to travel. Two thousand kilometers, whatever. You can go and walk with this map. Why I'm showing this because I've analyzed all those uh, Mengir's maps. Идет прямая аналогия именно расположение мингиров на. And we have this uh, similar uh, mingir placement and similar to those dots on those triangular coordinate coordinations maps. На господствующих высотах и именно на. They place it on hills. They place it on some significant uh, objects like a hill or mountain, so we can see it like from far away. And uh, one mingir is uh, obviously seen by another manger. Профильных линиях разреза и горных массивов и рек с тем, что мы имеем сейчас современные геодезии. То есть как бы первый вывод, который направлен. Just the same as uh, today coordination net, triangular coordination net. Вылся при анализе, а не использовали наши древние предки ту же самую систему для. Didn't our answers? Uh, I've asked myself, uh, didn't our ancestors use the same system as we do right now.
скажем так, путешествию для того, чтобы по миру можно было ходить. They could have like traveled the world and uh, the mangers could be the cardinates to continue the, their trips. Помните, кстати, вот мы все в школе учили вот эти сказки. Пришел и волнует. In our ancient Russian fairy tales you have this province на перекресток трех дорог. Uh, fairy tale about that night he came to uh, the crossroads and he read on those stones that like if you go to the left you lose your horse if you go to the right you lose uh, your something else maybe money and if you go straight ahead you lose your life видит там путеводный камень налево пойдешь направо пойдешь знаете вот в каждой сказке всегда есть so every fairy tale has its truth то есть вот наше вот это вот древнее сознание которое идет еще с незапавных мир our ancestors send us the message uh, to encrypt and to decrypt the encrypted evidence действительно сохранила истинную систему я предполагаю назначение вот этих вот всех so this is the actual uh, purpose actual uh, actual uh, form of usage of those menus непонятных камушков опять же для примера смотрите so, вроде бы сет this is another example we have this manger location map here одинаковая но вот эта вот верхняя сеточка это расположение менгиров а вот это это классическая сеть triangular system of a modern time то же самое, это расположение уже дальнейших на территории Краснодарского края, это триангуляционная сеть Германии. Ну, в принципе, как строится триангуляционная сеть, я рассказывать не буду. Это... I'm not gonna tell how, uh, describe how this triangular system is made, but it has... Скучно, нудно и очень долго. Because Вам нужно узнать, это потом в конце пригодится. Бывают сети трех уровней. Сеть первого уровня... So there's a three-level network. The first one is the hugest one, which is planetary network. The second one is like a original. The third level is like local. So the dots are like 5 to 10 kilometers in the local one. Ахуновские мингиры, почему я их взял? Those are those, the ancient ones, Ахуна мингиры, that I've talking about, I've been talking about, like, dated in the timeline, like, 12 to 14 thousand years before Christ. Взял. Во-первых, на Ахуновских мингирах очень четко прослеживается одна интересная вещь. Сейчас What we покажу. see on those mangirs По двум крайним камням, вот они схематично расположены, четко выстраиваются correctly coordinated to the moon and uh, we had this correct lines which are coming out of those mangir connected dots so it's a vector of the movement so we just let our guys try and they like put those lines where those stones head us. And we found that they point us to some direction which is quite interesting. That's what they point us to. And they point us to other mangirs, which is the concentrated location. Another vector, там тоже для этого дополнительные камешек есть. И, кстати, в работах археологов это тоже отмечается. And they like второй вектор, он проходит через так называемые узкие городища. Кстати, вот недавно. Have those intersections in all those significant ancient places that are put on the map earlier. Маленькие такие мингирные камешки и что-то наподобие современных геодезических знаков тоже. So we like. Если опять же посмотрим. Admitted that they are concentrated dots 
concentrated dog football system of navigation. And they coordinate the travelers and so they can like, find a way to some town, some city or some concentrated uh, intersection of those vendors where we can get the destination. And we see some strange objects on those uh, places. Somebody says like a Kurgan, which is like a, an ancient gra uh, grave. But we didn't find any graves in it, we didn't find any bones, uh, we, found, we, we think this is uh, uh, like a little hill, so the manger can be seen from a lot more distant place and be more significant because, you know, we can have any kind of stones laying around, but if we see it like a stone here which is standing straight up it has this thing around it maybe we like know oh that's the place okay let's like go there and not there so there are no graves there just the destination hills which the mangers could be put on. Now they are destroyed, they don't know anything. So they could have been used as a navigation system. Why is this all connected to astronomy? Because those stones are placed for some specific reason, like the rising of the high, north moon, and these are degrees, and you don't, I don't want to like translate this, this is pretty strange, you can maybe uh, believe in flat earth and say this is all bull, but that's what I think, because uh, we don't know nothing about stars, but we know that something is up there and it looks like a light, so that's what the ancestors see, that's what we see right now, and they coordinated those man gears um, with those stars above. So it's their it's their idea. Maybe they it was easier to for them to navigate to travel. Maybe because you always see the North Star, you always see the Polaris or whatever, and you like can find your way in the stars and you can find your way with those main gears which are observable in the daytime. You can get lost if you are an ancient guy because you know you don't have to have any iPhone, you don't have to have any iPad which you you just can have your eyes. Just look up and find out where you at. What's the day? What's the time? Anything. You don't have to have any watch with you because you can find it any anything in the sky. And those main gears are the the map of this navigation. So we have this navigation stone here. And we have like a mile away another one. We can put this vector, this, this direction line and we can like uh, configure the direction that we have uh, supposed to travel. But we gotta have some another coordination system to uh, calculate the, the distance so this, what's the easiest calculation system which we can connect to these main gears on the ground? What is it that's always with us? It's a star, a sky. So that's why you have to have astronomy to uh, predict what is up uh, below the horizon 
what you cannot see. How long is to the travel there? How long is to the travel there? So you can like, you know, uh, configure your resources, configure your uh, food supplies, and uh, maybe decide whether you have to like take a nap or whether you have to go because you won't find anything in like 20 kilometers and you gotta have like to go because if you like won't go you may have uh, a lack of water at some time that's why they had this uh, coordination with the stars not because they wanted to do their rituals, their cultural prayings, dances and stuff like that. It's not like that. That's because they wanted to travel from A point to the B point. So that's the aerial pictures that I found on Google. I occasionally found them on Google and when we went to Euro trip last year I was searching for them. Officially they say it's a cultural object and the graves of some catacomb culture. It's okay to comprehend it until you visit it, actually the place. And then you find out it's a whole bunch of lies. It's no graves at all. It's a strange formation, you know. So this is just stone basement which they put manger on. It's another one, it's a whole, whole much bigger one. So we see, even the years past, we see this sectoral orientation, an actual lines and the circle. So, right close to that system, we had in just another little system, which uh, allows us to draw another line of destination. This is Arkaim which is uh, an ancient uh, town in close to Euro, which was dug out, and this is the plan of this town. That's another one. And it's in the Mid-Asia, uh, in Uzbekistan, which is like maybe three to four thousand miles from the Arkaim town and it looks pretty much the same the same technology of building so if we had those uh, destination lines, those vectors draw from Arkaim. So they look like similar in degrees. And here, you know, it's 247 degrees. This is. 67 degrees and 337 degrees and 157 degrees and that's the same as here if you orient it the same you're gonna find out that it's the same 
Немножко вовлекаемся астрономией, знаем, что у нас вот, полярная звезда, это не всегда та звезда, на которую наши предки ориентировались. Впереди... So in astronomy we know the polaris is a star with the ancestors actually were coordinated to. Or the coordination was tied to polaris. But not, that's not actually exactly correct. In the different millenniums they had different stars to be uh, oriented at. Соответственно, была разная векторная система. So it, they had different vector system, different destinations, lines. Куда нужно было идти? И вот мне кажется, вот именно по вот этим вот градусным мерам можно определить примерный возраст, когда вот. So I think if we use this uh, degree system here, we can actually uh, find out in what uh, is the timeline for those objects where they were found. On what period did it work, and what timeline did it work, and uh, we can like make another conclusions. In what century did it was built? It would be an archaeological model for understanding the age of the object. Ну, опять же, просто вам для примера. Это у нас Аркаим, это... So, this is the Arkaim, and this is that second one in Uzbekistan. Объекты разнесены примерно друг от друга на 5000 километров. 5000 километров from each other, like 3000 miles. И дальше что у нас получается? Когда мы вот эти все вектора и вот эти места сосредоточения... So, if we, like, connect those destination lines, we can have this network here. Находим. У нас получается, что существуют некие узловые промежуточные точки. Здесь so we have like middle intersection dots. Здесь находится кое Карганкала. Здесь This is Карганкала. This is Аркаим. This is uh, Altai Mountains. This is Caucasus. This is Moscow. Тоже есть городище подобные Аркаиму. То есть получается, у нас есть некие узловые точки, придя в которые путешественник мог уже четко определить, куда ему. So those are the sectors that the traveler could reach and then find out exactly where he needs to go. Maybe right, left, or whatever. Because it's quite a distance, you know. And uh, he thinks it's the first level of the ancient navigation system. Ancient uh, coordination, geodesical coordination. Из этого у нас начинает формироваться уже геодезическая модель первого уровня, уже более so, глобальная. То есть это уже точку, вы определите, куда вам дальше идти. Внутри уже геодезическая сеть второго уровня. So, inside this uh, network, there's a, a network of the second level, which is more precise for regions. And the local network with those little mangers. And uh, the other thing that we found on many mangers, we had this little circle with those crosses inside. And what that's what we have from the Google Maps. And if we look on the previous picture, we're gonna understand what that means. Right now, we can understand it, but maybe two years ago we didn't know what it meant. We, we thought it was a cross or some other symbol, doesn't mean anything. So that symbol might have like uh, show the traveler that you're walking in the correct direction. You're going there. It's okay. And that's a navigation destination line. And we lost this system right now. And just another example of Tijuana complex in Mexico. If we, if we like draw the similar lines, we can find out that it's a destination line to Great Pyramid 
from Hedger Darrow, Azuka Stones, Sam Fighter, and so on. And if we like uh, go on the next level, we find out this. So if you know a simple way to travel on those stones that I've shown, you eventually can find your way to any of those objects. Without any compass, without any navigate, navigation device, you just can go and go and reach your destination wherever you want. That's a theory, but it actually works. We could continue this work, but we need to like put on the map about uh, a thousand more objects at least, so we can like um, be more precise. When this model starts to work, and we understand the ancient model, we can actually find some artifacts if we follow those lines, follow the intersection lines, and so on. Because in any intersection, there's going to be a milestone like this. And those are the intersection of uh, ancient civilizations and uh, just quite a, an area to research. Okay? So, thanks to the author. And we're gonna stop this for today because it's. Uh, uh, the end and so you uh, you guys want to ask questions if you didn't understand anything and uh, so put it in comments share this video so everybody can find out that our ancestors were not that stupid as I've said in many of previous videos if you haven't watched them just go ahead and do it so subscribe on my channel for more info and Good luck.